oh boy, aren't we all feeling it? I remember that moment when they announced that kids won't be going back to school in the fall for in-person classes. I could feel the stress just slowly taking over me. And then I wondered, what has this pandemic done to my mind and body? Psychologist, Dr. Amir Ramazani, I sat down with him to talk about stress and its relation to the brain. Dr. Ramazani, hello and thank you so much for being here. You could not have been here at a more perfect time. Oh yes, oh, I agree, I agree. And I'm <laughs> happy to be here with you. I'm hoping, you know, I thought about you um, just a few days ago when all the announcements came down with schools now being closed indefinitely and, um, you know, state of California starting to go through these rolling closeouts again. I could feel personally a wave of stress just coming right over me. And it oh, yeah. made me immediately think of someone like you who understands what is happening up here. And that's why I wanted you to bring, bring you here to talk about what we're feeling right now and how we can manage it. Stress, stress, stress. Our world is stressed right now. Yeah, I, yeah, and and you you said it so well. It, it's it's really all of us here now. We're all we're all in it together, and we're all going through the the same pandemic. And um, and you know even that there's even some reports that uh, you know more than fifty percent of of our nation is under so much stress because of financial challenges, uh, caretaking challenges, um, and and so. You know, and, and you know, as you said, you know, the, the feeling of the weight coming over you, this is what stress does. It's, it's not just what's happening in our environment, but it's also the, the sort of the reality that we're sort of built with these, you know, uh, biological mechanisms to respond in a particular way. So it's like our body kind of feeling that weight. Um, so I, I think, uh, yeah, this is, uh, I, I hope uh, our discussion is, is not only helpful for for us, because I learned too, but also for, for your viewers too. I'm a huge fan of leaning on experts and people who have spent their, their time studying and understanding things that we don't. It seems like nowadays, I saw a funny meme the other day, like uh, graduates of doctor, like a coronavirus. Everybody seems to know, and I'm looking for MD or these uh, accolades that come after their name saying, okay, so where did you get this information from? You're one of those people, that brain that I see right over your shoulder. <laughs> you understand that thing. You understand the thing up, up in the head right now. And I've yeah. shared with you and many of my friends here that uh, just as I'm a big believer that you get your teeth cleaned and you go to the doctor and you get your heart checked and your cholesterol checked, this is a function up here that needs uh, attention. So take us into inside that brain that is over your shoulder that all of us have what is happening to this brain right now during one of the most stressful times in most of our lives yeah yeah definitely um you know when when we're, when we're going through stress uh there's there's many processes that come up um i think it's very important for us to know that we're already um built with certain ways of um you know detecting stress um, coping with stress, and also the way in which we're, we're driven to manage this stress. So, you know, as, as you said, kind of taking you inside the, the brain, you know, um, we have these primitive centers, like the, what's referred to as a limbic system. And one part of the limbic system uh, that's really deep in the brain is called the amygdala. It's kind of like an almond-shaped center. And this, this uh, is responsible for our stress response. And our fear response and you know what's interesting is that um, as we're experiencing stress our body is going to react in a particular way so for example um, when our stress response is activated our heart rate is going to go up we're going to really uh, our muscles are going to get much more blood flow we're, we're going to get ready to engage in some sort of action it's actually really a it's supposed to be a protective response it's supposed to be a helpful way of really surviving. That's just one system, however. We're, we're also built with another system that's uh, now we're referring, you know, there's different um, 
ideas around this, this newer system that we're, we're talking about. There's an idea around what's called polyvagal or the caretaker system. And this caretaker system is a way in which we're, we're able to uh, nurture and care for uh, not only ourselves when we're in a stressful situation, but also for other people. And uh, this, this caretaker system, um, we, you know, we utilize it a lot and with other people like our children, our friends, our loved ones, family. But it's, it's really rare uh, for us to really tap into this other uh, caretaker system and turn it, in, turn it towards ourselves when, when we're uh, experiencing a stressful situation like, like this, really, this uh, pandemic. Um, and so, you know, not, not only um, do we have this stress response in the brain, but we're, we also have this amazing ability in our brain and in our, in our body to be able to uh, nurture and care for ourselves and other people. Why do so many of us react to stress differently? I have friends that are just, they're a puddle of a mess right now. And I have others that are like, ooh, you know, we'll get through it. It is, it is what it is. Yes, that's a really good question, you know. Um, and it's, it's almost kind of like going to this idea of like, what is actually stress? And, um, you know, and I, and I really like what um, the American Institute of Stress says, which is that, you know, one thing that could be stressful for one person could be actually pleasant for another person. And it really kind of highlights this, this in between, which is that it's not just what's happening in our environment, but how we are seeing what is happening, how we are evaluating it and our own beliefs, whether those beliefs are from our own culture, from the society that we live in. And so um, for some people actually being in a situation where things are out of control has been the norm so they can easily adapt. For some people, um, when they've had to structure their life in a particular way so that they don't feel out of control, um, then when something like the, this, uh, the corona hits, it could be very um, stressful for them. And it's, it's not only just for them, but also for everyone else, because, you know, just part of our day to day life is thrown off. So it's, you know, our, our everyday life of, you know, going out and you know, where do I go to get my groceries? Where do I take my children now for, for their education? Um, where do I, just something as simple as where do I go in the morning to pick up my coffee? That's all been changed. So a routine has been thrown off. And some people could deal with the, the routine being thrown off very easily. Some people cannot. And it also speaks to um, our, our internal ability to cope. Um, one, uh, you know, and going back to this idea of how people respond differently, so, uh, you know, if we have enough coping mechanism to deal with the stress, mental- When you say coping mechanism, sorry to interrupt, but what, do, what does that mean? Yeah, thank you, thank you, yes. Uh, you know, what that means is that, uh, do we have the ability to actually, um, to regulate our body? For example, when our body is feeling like our heart is pounding, we're feeling very stressed, we're in the middle of, you know, taking care of a loved one, um, and, in that moment, does the person have the ability to mentally kind of come out of the situation, see themselves, and then be able to self-regulate? So, you know, have like some sort of um, uh, effective self-talk or compassionate way of responding to themselves and the other person who's with them. Uh, there's many coping mechanisms. Uh, I'm happy to talk about that. Um, and. Uh, but for some individuals, we, we never learned how to cope with stress. It's not like, you know, we're, we, we go to school and the teacher, at least in my generation, you know, the teacher, you know now I think they are doing this, but, it, it, you know, the teacher's like, you know, today you're going to learn about how to manage your stress, how to deal, deal with conflict, and here's how you do it. One, two, three. It's very rare. Uh, so we learn this through our you know, parents, friends, our own personal self-development. And I'm glad you bring that up because 
Um, I, I have admitted, I've talked to you about it and I tell everybody, like there is no taboo in my world about having my person because it took me a lot of money and a lot of time to say, you know what, I got to go figure this out so that when I deal with stresses in my life, whether it's my four kids or my husband that at, at times could get on my nerves because that's what husbands <laughs> sometimes do, but, uh, that maybe the Sholly, uh, 10 years, 15 years ago is different than the Shali is today and how we react. And I, I've realized that a lot of it, it, I can teach this brain, right? Yeah. We have the ability to change what's up. Just because this was the brain that we were given. And what was that little almond thing that you said we have it all in our brain? Yes, just because my, my whatever is like whatever doesn't mean that I don't have the ability to make changes. We have the power, am I correct? Yes, you, you are exactly 100% correct because, because these, uh, you know, when we're experiencing a challenge or, or when we're feeling out of control, which is mainly what stress is, um, in that, at that point or in that period, we're experiencing some sort of emotion and emotions in that moment, they, you know, have a beginning and they have an end. And so often when we're in it, it's like, no, this is not going to end. And so we have to get, you know, we'd have to freeze or fight or um, we have to flee. Uh, so, and I think you said it really well, we, we do need to have the ability to uh, step out of the emotion or the thought that we're experiencing because of the stressful situation, see it, and then be able to redirect our mind to what's you know, really meaningful for us in our lives right now. You know, or even to be kind to ourselves and the other person who we're experiencing the stress with. Uh, and that, that, is, that is hard, I gotta say, that is hard. Oh, it's hard. Oh, it's really hard. <laughs> but when you get there, and I mean, I wouldn't say that I'm there, but if you get even close to there, yeah. it feels so much more powerful and better than in what the situation could be. I totally agree. Yes, I, when, you, when you are able to then really see truly uh, what's really happening, there, there's a lot of other, uh, I think, healing type of emotions that naturally come up. So for example, in, you know, if in that situation we're trying to take care of someone or we are challenged with money because we lost our job because of the corona, then in that moment when we're feeling like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? We're able to step out and say, oh my gosh, you know, uh, this, this is, I'm not alone in all this. We're all going through this. And there's a moment of not only acceptance of what's happening, but there's also other feelings like gratitude that comes up, acceptance and kindness and compassion, which really I think helps individuals to moving forward in a healthy way. One of the, the points you just brought up, uh, Dr. Ramazani, when you were talking about, and I'm curious to know this, that brain, again, I keep looking at that brain when you're talking because it's the one thing all of us have, right? We all look different from the outside. We like different foods. We speak different languages. We're all different in so many ways, but we still have the same body parts, right? Yes. Uh, when I look at that brain, I think there are so many of us who want to be able to connect with another person and that person's going through it. Oh, okay. So I, maybe I can go through it as well. Is that built into our brains? Uh, I, I think I know what you're referring to, but I don't want to assume right now. Can you okay. tell me a little bit more about that? Yeah, because like, there's do so we... much I want to say, but I want to really. Sure. Answer. Absolutely. And thank you for wanting to clarify that. Does our brain, the function of our brain and all the stuff that's happening over here, do we have this need to want to connect with other people or to see that, hey, that person is going through pain, so I'm going to be able to deal with my pain as well? Does that connection make it possible for someone to be able to manage their stress as well? Um I believe so. I believe so. And our, our brain is designed to uh, really be, um, to form relationships and not only just relationships, but really meaningful relationships and connections with other individuals. Um, and, and what happens is when we don't have that connection, 
when we can't empathize for someone else when they're going through the same pain um, or when we feel that other people are judging us that is actually painful in us and not only emotionally but sometimes even physically we will experience pain um, and so I think that that being able to have this common humanity mm -hmm. uh, this sort of this universal ability to know that gosh you know I'm not the only one here because the flip side the flip side of, of, of stress is that stress makes you feel isolated so there is no common humanity it, it makes you feel criticized and either by other people or by yourself which is often the case especially in our in our society in our culture especially things around um, you know achievement and uh, and and really uh, criticism about how we do things but the flip side of criticism is this kindness and compassion towards ourselves and, and others and then when we're you know feeling stressed we feel really attached to the situation we worry we're really fused with that situation it's hard for us to do the flip side which is this sort of spacious attention and and presence with with our life which brings me to my next question, Dr. Ramazani. Are you worried about the emotional state of so many people? We've talked about the pandemic so much and we've talked about the health of people, but on the rise, we have seen suicide numbers go up. We've seen yeah. depression go up. Mental illness issues are on the rise. Are you concerned? Yes, I, I am. Uh, this is something that a lot of organizations have been talking about. The, the World Health Organization, uh, American Psychological Association, American Psychiatric Association. This is, uh, I think, not only, you know, we, I think we're all as a nation worried, but also mental health care professionals are specifically concerned and, and we are doing things about it, you know, things, things to, uh, for example, volunteer our time, and, and really give back during this time. And I, and I think, you know, even though we're concerned and we're, we're worried, this is really a, a time where I'm, I'm seeing and I'm witnessing a lot of people giving. Like for example, um, you know, I mentioned, you know, mental health professionals volunteering, but also there's artists and musicians who are just giving their music for free for people to listen to just for the sake of wellness. Um, there are there are organization organizations who are coming together to have projects for individuals who are in need. Uh, you know, in, in California, there is uh, they're promoting uh, uh, providers, mental health care professionals, to lower their fees for individuals who are who are damaged by the coronavirus, and people are responding. So I think you know I'm I'm worried, and at the same time, I'm also. Um, well, I'm also engaged myself, but also I see my, my colleagues giving their time and really making a difference. I think this is a time that, that we can really make a, we could have a healthy response to this situation and grow as a, as a society together. What would your advice be to people who are watching right now? Just put them in all spectrum of the stress level, whether they, they just never learned the coping mechanisms of stress or they did, and they're feeling, all of us are feeling something right now. Yeah. Given all the knowledge and expertise that you have, what would be your advice to us to navigate through these next few months, possibly years? Yeah, that's very true, possibly years. And, um, you know, my my suggestion is to um, to really connect with other individuals and not to be not to remain isolated. Uh, and this is coming not only from you know just you know my my knowledge, but also my own ex personal experience. That you know the idea that of, of social distancing it, it really should be physical distancing, but we should really be in it together. We should really seek out and still as much as we can um, video our, our loved ones and still remain connected. Um, I think this is also a time of, of uh, if, if some people can afford it, of, of giving, not necessarily with money, but also your time and your efforts. Uh, this is a compassionate act of, of, of uh, helping people. And I think when we do compassionate acts 
of giving not only for others and for ourselves, we feel energized and we feel well. We really need to do this. Um, I think also, you know, being able to have some sort of regular wellness practice, and this could be so many things. This could be either connecting with a group. It could be something as simple as yoga or something that I that I enjoy doing, like meditation, even if it's just for one minute a day. Um, and and I think you know, for for some folks who who may be challenged by the situation, um, it's very important to know that um, this is this is. This is this is a hard situation, and it is a situation that is changing. And sometimes it's it's okay not to be okay. And so that that in an, in and of itself, um, I think is an act of kindness towards the self. It's kind of like giving ourselves permission to uh, be able to really um, be be as we are without having to be the perfect parent or the perfect you know, worker or the student. And so just really um, practicing this way of relating to ourselves. It's almost like we have relationships with other people, but really building that relationship with ourselves. This is the time, I think, for us to do this. And then there's formal ways of doing it. These are, you know, uh, as I'm making these suggestions, these are very informal, but but there are very formal ways of actually going through this. There are, you know, programs, classes, um, I could talk more about that, but I, I know you can't. And I'm still stuck on the on the one thing that I will probably carry out of this interview and take with myself is that it is okay not to be okay. Yes. And to say that out loud and to feel that um, that it is okay not to be okay and to know that others are going through the same thing, I think just in itself makes you go, ah. <sighs> Yes, oh, just, yeah, just <laughs> relax, right? We, we, uh, that right there is, is so, it's just a wonderful place to be, to, to really feel that, feel grounded in the middle of, of a situation that is chaotic. Like one of my colleagues says, uh, it's like breathing underwater. Like you're sort of grounded, you're able to function, but it's, it's a challenging place and you know that. Um, so I, yeah. This has been so enlightening, Dr. Ramos. I, I'm going to take that with me <laughs> every time I have those meltdown moments and I, and I have them. I have four kids, I have a stressful job and everything in my world is changing. So I get it. I get it. I get it. And I share my weaknesses as well, or my challenges, my vulnerabilities, because I want other people to know that it is okay not to be okay and then you shift afterwards right there's a yes. way to shift afterwards yes i i think yes and i think that 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 is the shift in it in and of itself um because we're so, sort of like on autopilot like we wake up we you know we have our we got to do x y and z and then we rarely have time to give ourselves permission to say you know things i'm gonna just be as i am and that there's nothing wrong with that and I, that doesn't mean I'm going to be passive and let go. It, it just means that I'm still going to try to take care of things. There's this practice where uh, it's, a, it's a meditation practice where you bring meditation uh, to unpleasant activities and pleasant activities. And really, most people have different experiences, but some people recognize that, you know, being able to do the activity is just the activity, but my experience of it is very different. It could be pleasant, it could be unpleasant, it could be neutral, it could, or it could just simply be me doing the activity without reactivity emotionally. Well, my pleasant, my, uh, my experience today was extremely pleasant with you. I so appreciate your time. I'm a big fan of of you and, uh, and what you're able to teach us to be able to just 
figure out this thing. I always say it is what it is. Like this is, this is what it is. Right. And, and now what are you going to do with it? And now how are you going to react? We may not, one of my favorite quotes is you may not be able to uh, change the storm that surround us, but we sure can choose what we're going to do in that storm. And, and I choose to dance. Oh, so appreciate you. Thank you, Dr. Ramazani. And please, we're going to have you back on because there's so much more we can talk about that, that brain behind you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Ramazani. Thank you, Shelly. You've been listening to It Is What It Is with Shali Zomorodi. You can join in and ask your questions live on Shali's Facebook or Instagram page. You can find so much more by following Shali on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and by visiting shaldi.com.